Let me read to you a passage from the 10th chapter of St Mark's Gospel, verses 17 to 27. It's the Gospel for Monday after the 8th Sunday of Ordinary Time. St Mark writes, As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Do not defraud. Honour your father and your mother. Teacher, he declared, All these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go, sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. That's from Mark chapter 10, verse 17 to 27. There are three accounts of our scene today that I've just read. There is the one given us by Mark that I've just read. There is the one by Luke, chapter 18, verse 18 to 27. And there is the one by Matthew, chapter 19, verse 16 to 22. Let us not, let us not delay discussing the theories that account for the appearance of the same passage in each gospel. As a matter of fact, the passages are not the same. There are differences, and these reflect different emphases. In Mark's account, a man ran up and knelt before him, while Luke tells us that a ruler asked him. The question this man asks of our Lord is the same in each account, as is virtually our Lord's response to his question. It is when the man tells our Lord that he had observed God's commandments from his youth that there is a difference. Mark informs us that Jesus, looking on him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Chapter 10, verse 21. In Luke, our Lord simply says, One thing you lack. Chapter 18, verse 22. In Luke, the invitation to sell all and follow him is part and parcel of Christ's response to the original question, What shall I do to inherit eternal life? Abandon all and follow me, is our Lord's final answer to him. Our Lord is placing himself on the level of the Torah, indeed above it, because in following the Torah from his youth, the man still lacked. The man lacked the more that Christ could give, which was, to his great surprise, the person of Jesus. For this, he was invited to throw overboard all his possessions and come with the Master as his dedicated disciple with a free heart. No prophet from Abraham to Moses to the prophets and to John the Baptist had made such an audacious, an audacious claim as to the high path to God and heaven. It was not a demand because our Lord had already indicated, Luke chapter 18, verse 18 to 20, that keeping God's commandments would get him to heaven. But Christ was offering a higher way. He was offering them all. Matthew helps us by reporting Christ's statement, If you would be perfect, go, sell all, follow me. Matthew chapter 19, verse 21. This is a momentous teaching and doubtlessly unexpected by the ruler. One wonders, incidentally, in what sense the man whom Luke is describing was a ruler. 
Luke chapter 18, verse 18. It is exactly the same word, ruler, in the Greek, which John uses of Nicodemus. John chapter 3, verse 1. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a ruler or leader of the Jews. Our man of today's gospel may have been a Pharisee, a young Pharisee, or holding some position in the Sanhedrin. The Gospels do report that some among the rulers were believers in Jesus, though generally secretly so for fear of the Jews. I have lingered on Luke's account and Matthew to highlight the difference from Mark, which I noted earlier. In our Gospel passage of today that I read from Mark, chapter 10, verse 17 to 27, when our Lord received the answer from the man who ran up and knelt before him, he looked upon him and loved him. Mark chapter 10, verse 21. This also throws light on the great call of God to man that he live a holy life and seek happiness with him in heaven. It is in Mark precisely when our Lord looks on the eager young man, we are told he is young by Matthew in chapter 20, verse 22, with love that he then extended his invitation to leave all and to follow him. Our Lord was offering a priceless invitation to become his close and personal friend, a special disciple who would follow the Master physically and imitate him in his apostolic poverty and dedication to the kingdom. What Mark tells us is that this high and special vocation, this special step, this further step he ought to do to inherit eternal life, this one thing more that he lacked, was the direct involvement with the person of Jesus Christ in faith and love, expressed by a special imitation and following of him. The invitation came, and it was due to the love that Christ had for him personally, in all his individuality. Christ looked on him, knew him to his soul, and loved him. Then came the summons. But he remained sovereignly free. No matter how special the choice of God of a person Due to his love for that person, the person remains free. No matter how many gifts God bestows, the receiver of those gifts remains free. I prefer to think of this young man as having received special gifts all through his youth to his early manhood, gifts of grace, enabling him to live a good life according to God's commandments, and all of this was leading to the moment of our gospel scene. It was perhaps the principal purpose of his religious history to that point. God was preparing him for his encounter with Jesus Christ. And in this, he is an instance of what, to a greater or lesser extent and in different ways, God has done for each of us. He has prepared us for our encounter with Jesus Christ. The great moment comes and Christ looks on us with love and extends his invitation. But we remain free. The young man who had been so good and whom Christ looked upon and loved, remained free at this critical moment, and he turned down the offer. He did not want the more, the better path. As a matter of fact, every day has its likeness to our gospel scene of today. We who are in Christ by faith and baptism have, to one degree or another, been striving to gain eternal life, and indeed to follow Jesus Christ as our Master. He looks upon us constantly with love, and extends to us each day, as if anew, the invitation to follow him in love and obedience, detaching ourselves from all that might interfere with this all-important love. Let us not turn it down in any sense. Let us renounce and avoid the smallest venial sin, any deliberate sin, and most especially any mortal sin of thought, word and deed. The one necessary thing is the following of Jesus Christ, whatever be the cost.